previously on the Death Saving Bros podcast. Augberg says, here's the plan. Stan, get a message out to our purified allies. The Hexor, organize a messenger to the free cities and Figus. Augberg then turns to Squats and says, track down Zawadski and that demon that he summoned, and I will acquire some new weaponry for us. Before we go, do not engage. I just laugh. It would be better to kill them now when they're not, you know, with the rest of the demon army. My warning was if we encounter Sargonis. If it's just for Lyris and Zawadzki, let's take them out. Squats motions you to come to a small ridge. You can see Zawadzki riding a horse as for Lyris is flying next to him. Uh, two shadows peel away from a copse of trees. It is Jet and a hulking figure with eyes of red. I grab A by the collar. You ready to charge, motherfucker? No. Zawadzki speaks up. Sargonis. You will be talking to me, Zawadzki. I am the avatar of Sargonis. I am the true disciple. Suddenly, the shadowy form roils. This is not a negotiation. This is a subjugation. What do you need from me? Well, it is the plan of our ruler Sargonis to make Principium the first place that we take over. You just happen to have the knowledge that we need. Sawadski says, You impertinent whelp. What about when I imbue him with true power? And Sargonis is going to touch Jet. It looked like I had like a pale fire at my fingertips. As an att- I'm going to attack him a bunch of times real quick for a total of... 129. No, no, Jet. Bring him back so I can kick his ass again. For Lyris, grab the priest and let us begin our invasion. Dalvia and Hexor's dad, what are we supposed to do next? Augberg's brow is furrowed and says, We're going to need a lot of backup. Welcome to another episode of the Death Saving Bros Podcast. I am your host and Dungeon Master, Paul Camper. With me today, I have Brad Renfro. What generation does Forrest Gump belong to? Gen A. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking die. Matt Smith. I have nothing entertaining to say. (laughs) Brad Richards. Oh, shit. I have a mouth full of Skittles. I didn't think this was coming up that fast. Um, That's what she said. (laughs) (laughs) Ha, ejaculation. Eric Nemeth. Hey, Paul, you know, have you ever heard of Netflix and Chill? How about Amazon Prime and Nasty Time? Eric, or you've already gone through all these before. <laughs> Blockbusters and Cockbusters? Yep, you've yep, used it all. that one. Fuck you guys. Ben Renfro. Why can't orphans play baseball? Because they can never find home. You've used that uh, one before, too. I've used that Aww. one. Have I? Yeah. I was just gonna... No, I I've never was... heard that before, but that's sad. That's fucking... That's only right to make an orphan joke tonight. Oh, wait, I already used the family portrait one, didn't I? Yeah. Damn. And we have a special guest today, Gene Jackson. Yar! What did the ocean say to the pirate? Nothing. Nothing. It just waved. waved. (laughs) God damn it! Don't fuck my shit up! Wait, 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 wait! Ben, it's go time. (laughs) Paul. Why couldn't the pirate get into the movie? It was rated R. It was rated R! All right, Ben, 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 Aliup, I got it. Hey, Paul, <laughs> what's a pirate's favorite letter? You think it was, it's R, but it's actually the C. Fucking. Paul, die. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, you adopted. Ah, you thought it was R, but it's actually the C. And you know what else you should see? You should see the newest episodes that we've been putting out of our fifth edition actual play Dungeons and Dragons podcast, which we are about to record right now. And this is episode 85. Paul, eat, that, that eat, just made me sick. Eat Die. a bag of dicks. Segways are always weak, but, you know, that's that's special mention. Wait, Ben, are you actually wearing a mask right now? I am, yes. <laughs> I said, Paul just made me sick, so yeah. Uh, last time, what happened on the Death Saving Bros podcast is our adventurers followed Caroline, a.k.a. Squats, towards a rendezvous between Jet, 
Sargonis, and Zawadski, as well as four Liras. And there they heard that Sargonis intends to summon his horde of demons and bring them into the primaterial plane so that he can conquer the world once and for all for himself and for Tiamat. But the catch is, one, he wants to conquer Principium first, because Trugala was the only kingdom that did not fall to him a thousand years ago. Second, he cannot wield the Diademic Zorius yet. He needs somebody else to do it for him, which is why he is holding on to Jet and Zawadski as his uh, pawns in this subjugation that he is about to enact. Yeah, I'm a bad guy. I'm a pretty cool guy, though. Just get a little sugar in me. <laughs> <laughs> And I start to go a little wacky. A little, a little cuckoo. cuckoo. One of them Nutri-Grain bars. <laughs> Only 64 grams of shit, but they do the job if you know what I'm saying. After the bad guys had all gone off, our heroes went back to the inn at the ford with Augberg Alistair, Hexor, and Dalvia, with Caroline, a.k.a. Squats, and with Stan, Stan the Man, and they began waiting for their allies to show up. While you're at the Inn at the Ford, is there anything specific that you adventurers want to do in order to prepare? Take a long rest. Jack off so my mind is clear and free from distraction. Eat a big plate of waffles and then jack it profusely. (laughs) (laughs) Or would you want to not jack it so you're all pent and riled up I think and you, you should, have more more aggression. I think you should just bang each other to build team morality mm, here. I'm sorry. Pause. Oh. <laughs> let's let's, uh, let's reel it back in just a little bit here. All right. So I'm going to show up with my swords and jack it with my other hand. Yeah, so I'm going to work <laughs> on... Uh, your hands. <laughs> I'm going to work on trying to level up this new war hammer that we got. And I'm also going to try to take the new war hammer that we got and level that one up as well. And then jack it. Essentially, I'm jacking the first war hammer <laughs> and trying to level up the other war hammer by just hitting trees. And by trees, he means And I'd also like to hit the, hit the bushes with the trunks outside. <laughs> the elevated bushes that have a trunk underneath. Did I say we were going to jack it? Because that's mostly what, ha- that's what happened. I don't know. It might have been mentioned once or twice. Okay, well, we're all going to jack it. About once or twice. In a square, so it's not a circle jerk. We're each in our own separate corner, so, yeah. Oh, you're sp- it's, it's okay, <laughs> so you're all going to be squares and jerking it. Die. Let's form a star. <laughs> twinkle, twinkle, <laughs> Patrick star. <laughs> okay. Well, speaking of stars, uh, after, it actually is a few days. Um, you know, you have your allies spread out all over Trugala and in the free cities and all over the place, so it is a couple of days and you don't hear anything from Sargonis or from Jet or from Forliris or Zawadzki. There's just this waiting period and you don't know what's happening. Uh, Augberg and Dalvia are off making plans, but bringing it back to the stars, one night, you are all resting. You're having a nice long rest. And, Abe, you have a dream. Oh, Abe having one this time. This is awesome. This guy's segues are incredible. <laughs> it's it's my job. Is it so, a, a sexy dream? Well, yeah, actually. It starts <laughs> off as a sexy dream. <laughs> You're calling Frothy and Daddy in the start. And the face is hella rose. <laughs> so, uh, at first, you your dream is you're downstairs in the common room of the Inn at the Ford, and you're there eating waffles, and then suddenly Dalvia is there, and she's pouring syrup all over your waffles and her shirt Aww. is unbuttoned halfway down. <laughs> you look over, you see Prothean's great sword her out. boobs are waffles. <laughs> you turn around and it's Hexor's face. <laughs> Very Ooh, even better. <laughs> well, she's there and uh, she's pouring syrup real slow and she's got her lips pursed and you look and you kind of have a moment of like, yeah, I mean, this is sexy, but why? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, Prothean stabs his greatsword through your waffles, and the moment's broken. And as dreams do, suddenly there's just a cut in your dream, and you don't know how this happened, but suddenly you're on a battlefield, and there are 
bodies all around you. And there are black things flying through the sky. And you can see Jet in front of you. Now I get an erection. <laughs> <laughs> this is the sexy part. <laughs> and now Prothean's great sword. He's not talking about my weapons. <laughs> <laughs> Stabs your waffles. Well, you do see Jet in front of you, and Jet starts to glow purple. And there's a purple mist hanging about his staff, the staff that he got from the Crypt of Parmar. You see him wielding his uh, staff of composition, but there's no purple mist around that. The purple mist is all coalescing around the staff, and then it starts to burn bright, phosphorescent, brilliant white, and you wake up to a mighty crash. All right, so I see Jet. He's wielding his staff, and then all of a sudden there's a bunch of white. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I it's was canon. <laughs> I was very specific to mention that it was the staff that he found in the crypt of Parmar. Remember, the staff wasn't glowing though. Everything it, else it was. It wasn't the staff that can be soft. It was specifically the staff that's hard and rigid. And then you woke up to a loud crash. I'm going to wake up screaming. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Both in jumps to the wall like a Kool-Aid man. You hear Stan down the hall. Stop breaking things in my inn. Is he on the top floor? You're all on the same floor. So the second floor? Or higher. Okay, I want to go down to the floor below it and then jump through the floor. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so now Prothean and Ambionitis are both in Abe's room. I'm just straight shit cocking it with a great sword out in my hand. <laughs> I got splinters. <laughs> my bad. Why are you screaming? Apparently there was a crash. <laughs> And it wasn't you guys? <laughs> I was going to say, it was just two. <laughs> Do I know where this crash came from? Yes, actually. So all of you were awoken, both by the screaming and the crash. And the crash came from outside. I crashed through the window. <laughs> hey, Ambionitis. You are on the second story. <laughs> yeah, it's all Think about all these crashings. It's almost like knocking. Knock, knock. Who's there? Not your parents. <laughs> 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 Do I hear Prothean say this? <laughs> <laughs> he also comes to the floor. <laughs> For the Can sake of argument, I'm going to say you did not hear him say this since he's in a different room from you. Um, but Abe has now jumped through the window. Stan is groaning down the hall again. <laughs> but Abe, after taking five falling damage because he was not on the first floor. It's only one story. <laughs> He sees that a massive ship has just crashed through the bridge outside of the inn. There's a ship sitting in the river right outside the inn. Oh, damn it. <laughs> yeah, I forgot the inn was on a river. Yeah, I want, 100%. I want to... Well, it is called the inn at the ford. I want to go to the room next to the one I'm in and then jump out that window. <laughs> when I jump out the window, I want to aim to land on a... Uh, give me an acrobatics check. Oh, shit. <laughs> I'm gonna walk down the steps. Damn. Natural 20. <laughs> you land squarely on Abe. Do you want to land on his horns or no? <laughs> yes. Of course I do. All right, you're gonna take two piercing damage. Wait, you so... Four. <laughs> so I take five damage from sticking a landing of, like, one story... And he jumps out with, like, all 300 pounds of giant-ass half-orc, lands straight on my horns, and only takes two damage. Piercing, because you're an ass. He's got thick skin. <laughs> Should have went into a rage. <laughs> Take one damage. Okay, do I also see the ship? Yes, you do. And Prothean comes out shirt-cocking, slash Donald ducking, and he can also now see the ship. Holy ship! Damn it! I was gonna say yeah. it, you fucker. <laughs> what are the colors of the ship? Colors, uh, uh, not like the ship colors, like the flag colors. It is a privateer ship, but if you had to guess, it's associated with Danakesh. Do I recognize the ship? Uh, you do not recognize the ship. I, after hearing a crash and multiple windows broken, finally roll out of bed. I rub my eyes. I go to look out the window, I don't see a ship. So then, I go and I walk downstairs casually, and I see Dalvia making pancakes or waffles or something, 
shirt unbuttoned, <laughs> and everything <laughs> becomes reality here. And I run square out the window and dive out of horror <laughs> that I see there because it was actually Hexor the whole time. <laughs> And I'm looking good. <laughs> and I'm looking good. And it's not until you jump through the window that you realize you were sleepwalking. <laughs> and now, do I see a ship? You see the ship as well. And uh, there is a... It is still very early in the morning, so it's just that gray light, and you can make out a figure, a small figure, climbing up out of the hold and towards the prow of the ship. But all you can see is the silhouette. And then you hear... Oh, it's you bitches again? Ah, jeez. My asshole puckers. He responded to the gooch... <laughs> the, the gooch show. The gooch horn. The gooch horn. <laughs> I have down from the uh, the ship. So, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to approach um, the people, the little throng of, of people now that are gathering at this, uh, this beautiful crashing art that I've created with my beautiful ship, which is impressive and massive. He must be compensating for something. I heard it was disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very disappointing mast. <laughs> Which one of you blew the gooch horn? That would be me, the king of goblins. Yeah, your new king. I'm going to kneel. Get your ass up. But you're the king of goblins. I must uh, show you yes. my my allegiance Pause. to you. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> I acknowledge it. But keep your pants on, and don't touch my hammers, any of them. Yes, my lord. Thank you, my lord. But I'm your pope. I should really put pants on, shouldn't I? Eh. Worst things have happened. I am first brother to the goblin king. I was going to say, <laughs> they're my cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> this is my cabinet, and you are my first goblin. Thank you. Oh, were you talking to him? No, you are my first goblin. This is my cabinet. Where is everybody else? Well, um, my first mate's still on my ship. And uh, the rest of the crew, they didn't quite make it. It was a, it was a good crash. <laughs> like just now? <laughs> Son <laughs> of a <laughs> <bitch>. <laughs> just now. <laughs> yes, just now. So your, entire, your entire crew dies, and you're just like, eh. Well, we'll talk to these guys first. <laughs> At that moment, the gangplank descends, and uh, down comes a grizzled-looking dragonborn with a big scraggly beard, and. He walks up and goes, Hey, what's up? I'm, I'm Gooch's first mate. Ah, yes. This is my first mate, Richard Cheese. He prefers to go by Dick, though. <laughs> Dick Cheese. Damn. Fall in line. <laughs> God damn. <it. laughs> Dick Cheese. <laughs> Lick my pussy right, hand. Right, right. No, we're crack. good, we're good, we're good. My neck. My bad. Hey, Dick Cheese, why do you smell exactly like Bixis and Abinitis? <laughs> Dick Cheese, fall in line. Aye, aye, Captain. Let's let's get all those Danakeshian warriors unloaded. It sounds like we're in for a fight, right? Yes. Mr. Goblin King, sir, I think your name was Abinitis. I can't remember the name of the rest of your party. However, I look to you in this moment of need and time. You wouldn't have blown the gooch horn without good reason, I assume, so I'm going to grab my people... <laughs> that are now dead. <laughs> and the cargo, which also happens to consist of people, off my ship. <laughs> and we'll do our best to assist you here. I swear it. I'm finally going to put pants on. Well, better get all the wizards to cast Resurrect on these dead bitches, because we have a fight coming. Did somebody say wizards? Oh, fuck. Yes. What the hell is that? Uh, you turn to your right, and you see a contingent of wizards approaching. They are wearing long robes with their hoods up, except the one that is speaking to you, who has his hood back, and he has a shaved pate, uh, balding head, and he opens his arms and says, I have come at the behest of Ogberg Alistair. We come to fight the Shadow Demons. Where's Figures with my army? <laughs> what color robes are they wearing? All manner of colors. Uh, but the majority of them are on the brighter scale. Yeah, we need, uh... Like, how, how bright? Like, um... Easter colors. Green, blue, pink. Pastel, right on. But yeah, we got a couple gaggles of dead people on that ship, but we're gonna need their asses back to life. Well, 
they just died moments ago, so it should be fine. Wizards of the Ark shine, and he snaps his fingers. Hop to it. And they all flood onto the ship as a bunch of people come flooding off. And all of the people coming off are wearing uh, loose-fitting shirts and baggy pants, those harem MC Hammer pants. And uh, they walk up to your group, and from amongst their ranks steps forward the Danakeshian ambassador, who you had seen in the throne room of Principium. I draw my greatsword. I spear him. (laughs) Out of love. (laughs) A bunch of swords uh, are drawn and pointed at your chest, or I guess at your back, since you're chest to chest and on the ground with Ambassador Kelmad beneath you. And as I am chest to chest with him, I'm going to whisper in his ear, I knew you'd come. (laughs) Isn't he walking with the king? Yes, but before we last departed, I sent him a message letting him know what was going on, and he said he believed me, but that he couldn't do anything about it. And now he's here, and I'm happy to see it. Seems suspicious. I pull my greatsword out of the army. So once uh, once you say this to Kelmad, he goes, oh, I see. So that was supposed to be a hug. An I spear gooch. <laughs> it is all right. He is just happy to see us. And, uh, so it's not true what they say. You can be touched. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what that... And then I do the shuffle. Oh, it's an MC Hammer <laughs> joke. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. <laughs> yes, uh, half work. I don't know your name, but I am working with the Purified, and it is high time that we destroy this scourge of Principium once and for all. And if you've noticed that my voice has changed a little bit, it is because I was just startled by your spearing hug. Is it because I'm still laying on him and he's just trying to talk to everybody? Okay. I will remove myself from his body and I will help him up. Thank you very much. What is your name? I'm Brixius. And I'm Ambionitis and I spear him. (laughs) I guess you are just happy to see me, too. That was evident by the wand in my pocket. He, too, is not a wizard. (laughs) And then I get up. And what are your other names? Prothean of the House of Greyman. Abe Van Halen. It is a pleasure to meet you all. We will be fighting side by side. You, me, my Danakeshian warriors. Uh, This goblin captain, Gooch Gleesgorm. Uh, his first mate, Dick Cheese. <laughs> I want to ask Dick Cheese if he has uh, any problems with uh, folds and <laughs> things being, you know, caught inside them. <laughs> he shouts from back from the top of the ship. He says, well, I do have a problem with folded sheets. Whenever I wash them, there's always lint getting stuck in the corners, and I can't figure out how to get those corners to match up. It just doesn't work. Fitted sheets. And then... Out from the inn comes Dalvia, Hexor, Augberg, and Stan. Dalvia walks forward and says, We will be fighting too. It is great to have your support, Kelmad. You have done well to broker an alliance with Principium. They believe that everything is on the up and up. Hopefully the rest of the purified members will be here shortly. listeners. Fun fact, I'm actually going to be on vacation when this episode originally airs in June 2021, so in order to make sure that I was ahead of schedule, I made sure to pre-record the mid-roll, which means that this is me from the past recording a future message for present day you. And the message is, thanks for joining us for another episode. (laughs) If you like what you hear, if you can't wait to hear what happens next as we come to an end in this campaign, and more importantly, if you just want to show a little support, please head over to Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or Podchaser and leave us a rating and review. 
you'll be helping us on the podcast charts, and we'll also read your review on the air. Another way to support the podcast, and look good doing it, is with some of our merchandise, available by searching Death Saving Bros at redbubble.com. But by far, the best way to support us is by becoming a patron of the show at patreon.com slash deathsavingbros. For as little as $2 a month, you can start accessing bloopers, original soundtracks, original artwork, conversations, and even extra episodes. In fact, this month, we're beginning to post our test episodes, which make up a 10-episode miniseries detailing the final episodes of our previous campaign and the moments before we launched the Death Saving Bros podcast. The audio isn't as polished as the main show, but it still has all the comedy you've come to know and love from this group. And if you join at the $25 Shade Arrow tier for at least three months, you'll be qualified for exclusive Patreon merchandise, the first batch of which was just sent out to our patrons this month. If you head over to our social media, you'll be able to see pictures of the shot glass, t-shirt, and player character minis that we sent out. Next time, if you become a patron, you could be getting in on those awesome rewards. Of course, if you're not financially able, we understand. And that's why some of that extra content that I had mentioned, like the Hammer Bottom lore episode, sometimes finds its way onto the main feed. But if you can support us, and do want access to all those great bonuses, head over to patreon.com slash deathsavingbros. And then, of course, the people that we support and want to tell you about are Will Savino's Music D20 Project and The Boy King of Idaho, both of whom are composers creating original tabletop music on Patreon. Their music is featured in this episode, and their websites are available in the episode description. Finally, the last thing I always like to do before getting you back to the episode is to recognize those that have made this show possible. And there's no one to thank more for their support than our patrons. Those who pledge at the $5 tier get a shout-out at the end of the show, but the following individuals have pledged to support us financially at the $10 tier or higher, so they get their support or shout-out right now. Ryan Cushman, 2 times Tyler, Gene L. Jackson, and our newest patron, Andrew Bettles. Thank you all for your support. Without further ado, we now return you to your regularly scheduled programming. Squire and my army. Stan speaks up and says, Sorry, Prothean. I haven't heard anything yet. Uh, but I sent a messenger out, sent our best agents all over the country into the free cities, so fingers crossed, you know. We've got the beginnings of an army. An army of orphans or a bit of front line. Lead the vanguard. <laughs> They're disposable. <laughs> you can always make more of them. <laughs> At that moment, you hear a familiar voice approaching from up the road. Well, well, well. Honestly, you would think with the, the ability of divination, I'd be able to see this coming. Yet, always, 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 I have to see you lot. I'm back! Please, for the love of God, tell me you did not bring your sister. Please tell me you did. And also, spear. Why am I- oh! <laughs> <laughs> Get this thing off of me! Oh my gosh! What is this, The Rock? Good to see ya. Uh, it's good to see you too, pal. Honestly, uh, little breathing room? Yeah, I, I get off him and I pick him up by the back of the neck. And I spear him. <laughs> Ooh! The cha- oh! <laughs> You're gonna, like, spear him mid-air, like, hold him up like <laughs> yep. a tree for a dog to leap and catch? Like a pinata hanging and I just fucking hug you out of the air. <laughs> Ooh, the double lariat. Mm. 
Uh, well, uh, it has been quite a minute since Mindborn, hasn't it? <laughs> oh, don't remind me of that place. Now, answer the first question. What about yeah, your don't sister? Don't remind me about my... She's not in... Uh, Chadley leans in a little bit and goes, You haven't uh, seen my sister any times recently, hopefully. Only in my dreams. <laughs> oh my. Well, there was there was this woman with an unbuttoned shirt. <laughs> Ended up being Hexor, though. Very confused. <laughs> mm, uh, Hector, you say? <laughs> oh, uh, anyways, my sister, back to the question you've asked. The answer is no. I have not seen my sister in quite a minute. Uh, actually, it's quite concerning. At that moment, you hear... Oh, Wait, fuck. I recognize those wing flaps anywhere. All of the Danakeshian warriors start drawing their swords and yelling in fear as they look up and you see a silver dragon flying overhead. Relax. Kelmad yells out, What is that? Is this dragon one of your friends? Please tell me so. I don't want to fight one. Yes, relax. It's mine. Oh, you would hate to fight one. Special one is... Quick, kill it. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> Please. Never seen it before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, uh, so everybody in uh, all the adventurers, you don't know who this is. You, it's a dragon to you. Oh, wait, that's Ooh. right. We were in a dodge flashback. So all I know is the Gooch Hornet has been, like, blown, and now I see a dragon. I'm in attack mode. I don't know what's going on. I'm going to hop off my ship, draw my sword, and just, like, actually, pee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to throw my dagger at the dragon. Just like, oh, God, a dragon! <laughs> I think I found myself a new mount. A pause. <laughs> That's pause. no mount. That thing's worse than a threat. That's... Don't talk about Chadley that way. <laughs> he will not be your mount. <laughs> that thing is far worse than a threat, my friends. That is my sister. I come running up. Your, your sister? And good gravy, she's naked. Good gravy, <laughs> naked. Yeah, can't you tell the, the resemblance? You both are a bit leathery. <laughs> Your poor mother. <laughs> I get plenty of sunlight. What's wrong with that? I, I guess nothing. Which one was born first? Who is this? Wait, do you, not, none of you actually know about Tara? Oh, shoot. <laughs> Taylor. Chadley's developed a little bit of a... In his voice. Arsh! I was about to add an, a rolling R to the word shit. I was like, Arsh! <laughs> Arsh! He's gone, he's gone Scottish on us. He's Scottish brogue. Top of the morning, laddies. Oh, he's up to me like a charmer's boy. Us. All I know about Taylor is that she's a blow dart champion and her and Dosh are a thing. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah, and she's da a nightmare. <laughs> isn't Dosh madly in love with her? She's dating Dosh? Yes. So, I'm not going to replace my war bill with a dragon? No. No. No, I think Dosh would get a little jealous <laughs> if you were riding that. You know, this doesn't look like Taylor. I grab Goose and throw it at him. Oh, 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 shit! What the fuck are you doing? Wait, and you also pick up the goblin, too? <laughs> <laughs> uh. I'm, well, you saw him flying. I'm going to yell, get on snack and, like, hold it down. So I'm going to draw, at the same time, I'm going to draw my dagger in my left hand and my rapier in my right hand and get ready to, like, Latch onto the dragon. The Gooch gun. <laughs> so, uh, Prothean throws Gooch, and he draws his weapons, but he falls far short of the dragon. Ah! <laughs> nice distance. <laughs> looks that like did a, not work. Looks like a lawn dart. <laughs> 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 Just lands straight down with your, <laughs> your rapier out. So, the dragon comes down, lands a bit away from the group of people, and sliding down off the dragon's back, you see a human woman, you see an adolescent male human, an adult elf man, and an adult humanoid figure that looks kind of like a human, kind of like an elf. So you would assume a half elf. And that's it. Do I recognize them? Uh, Protein, give me a perception check. Hold on, I have not put my dice thing together yet. Please be a one. It's the Hammerbottom's parents. <laughs> 13. Yes. The the dawn has been rising more and more as you've been out here talking with people, 
And as you squint a little bit to see who it is, because the dragon has landed a safe enough distance off, you realize that it is Figus. Figus, where the hell's my army? I'm sorry, sir. I've been working hard as I can to get here to you. Where's the army of orphans I ordered? With their parents. <laughs> they were never orphans in the first place. <laughs> you had to go make them orphans first. <laughs> Custom order. <laughs> what the hell is a Figus? My squire. It's a pleasure to meet you. And he holds out his hand to you as you're lawn darted in the ground. <laughs> oh, that's right. Okay. Uh, in that case, I'm just I'm not going to make eye contact with him. I'm gonna like raise my hand up and shake his hand. <laughs> he helps you up out of the ground and gra- hands you back your weapons and dusts you off. Thank you, young male adolescent named Figus. Yes. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, uh, Gooch, and. I'm sure you all remember uh, Wilhelmina. Isn't she dead? Wilhelmina had her fucking body torn <laughs> yeah. in half. Shadowly has a stroke. What? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, it would have seemed so, uh, but it, apparently Wilhelmina, uh, nobody dealt with her head after the beheading, and then Taylor took the head across the coruscating sea and uh, had her resurrected, true resurrected. So, um, yeah, Wilhelmina's back, everybody. I'll finish this off. Damn. Okay, some bullshit. I was all walking towards with my great sword out. Uh, Wilhelmina says, Prothean, I would not do that if I were you. And? And, uh, <laughs> the dragon's head snakes over and snorts in your direction. Give me attitude like that, I'm chopping your head off, too. I would look over at him and go, Try it. I dare you. Looks like we need three heads today. The dragon chuckles deep in its throat, and you suddenly hear the voice. You know, Chadley is quite right, Prothean. What is that infernal speech I hear in my head? Oh, God! (laughs) It's just me. I do believe the arcane runes carved into my mind may have started with the screeching of my big sister. But your sister speaking? And uh, the dragon's form starts to dissolve away in a soft glow as the dragon transforms into the halfling that you all know as Taylor. Hey, guys! Uh, Since I don't have an army of orphans, I'm about to cut someone's head off. (laughs) Hexor walks up and puts his hand on your shoulder and goes, Prothean, save that beheading for the demons. I was promised a goddamn crusade, and I don't have my army here. All right, I walk up and put Siren's axe in Prothean and say that ought to hold him for now. (laughs) (laughs) Just walking behind him casually. (laughs) That's that's what's happening right in the fucking back. One of the Danakeshian warriors goes, my God. And then you hear a soft thunk, and you look behind you as one of the wizards has just fainted on the gangplank from seeing you (laughs) just straight up axe somebody in the back. It's fine. It happens all the time. If you're passing out from that, you're you're not going to do so good in this uh, big scary battle. I was going to say shit. we have a lot of a lot of axing in the back to do. Get your shit together. Yeah, did you not just revive a whole slaughtered goblin army that was on a <laughs> ship? <laughs> you just saw all of them dead. Why are you fainting? <laughs> well, they weren't slaughtered. It was a ship accident. Ah, uh, they were they were mangled. Ship, I would imagine ship hit the fan. Oh, it it wasn't an accident. <laughs> Stan mumbles to himself, Why does everything that I own get broken around you people? <laughs> oh, oh, is this yours? It was a beautiful bridge. <laughs> it crunched phenomenally. It did. Quite. It was a great break. <laughs> <laughs> Clean. Clean. <laughs> Clean break. Ogberg steps forward and says, All right, all right. Everybody calm down. It's great to have everybody here, and I'm very happy that... Prothean's squire Figus and his crew have shown up. I haven't met uh, the last of you. Uh, Sir Half-Elf, what is your name? Dosh Johnson, with an exquisite mustache. <laughs> and I also want to say I have a uh, giant bandage over my right ear now, because my last action as Dosh recorded was uh, shooting myself in the side of the head as soon as I saw <laughs> Taylor. So, <laughs> and you rode in with her. <laughs> they made me come. I specifically hired this dipshit. Oh my! And I, I point at Abe. Specifically hired this dipshit, so I didn't have to come. 
all the way here with you, Fox. What is that? And now I'm here, anyways. So, and then the elf <laughs> that also wrote in with Taylor speaks up and goes, "Yeah, well, Dash, I really didn't want to come either, especially after these fucks almost got me traded in slavery. But guess what? We're all here. We burned the farm down. Don't worry, they're all dead. Hey guys, it's me, Sheriff Finrail. Finn, guess what? Wilhelmina's alive. Somebody gave her head <laughs> back. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm I'm very well aware of that. And he walks over to Wilhelmina and he takes her hand and says, "We're dating now." Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's best not lose our heads here. Okay. <laughs> 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 hey, Fagus, I'm calm down. Take this out of my back now. No, he can't talk. Just lay there. <laughs> Hexor, I need you to do this one thing to him that makes him not be able to talk permanently. Feeble mind him. <laughs> you've done it. You've done it before. You can do it again. <laughs> we are going to need his energy and stamina in order to defeat the demons. Not if he goes on a crusade before. And then Sheriff Finrail speaks up and goes, yeah, he can get a little crazy sometimes to anybody that hasn't hung out with that freak before, but it's fine. As long as we point him in a single direction and it's not one of us, we'll be just fine. Oh, by the way, uh, you little halfling, you'd look a lot like Taylor. Are you brother and sister? No, I'm actually just brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get, get fucked. <laughs> Eat a fucking bag of dicks. <laughs> You're a funny one. I like you. What's your name? My name is Chadley. Uh, the, yes, I am the little brother as... Well, pronounced as I am from the ground. Well, Chadley, the little brother, it's nice to meet you. And I said that I was dating Wilhelmina, a.k.a. Billy, not Taylor. That's, that's excellent. And uh, so you're dating someone who came back from the dead? Well, yeah, but we talked it over and uh, we all know that what she did was wrong and how she kind of went about, like, manipulating everybody in order to get revenge on her cousin, Roscoe. But, um, yeah, Roscoe's dead. Wilhelmina got killed, and now she's... And then, like, she did her time. And now she's working to help us, help you, save the world, right? That's what we're here for? You don't see people dating R. Kelly. You just see physical pain of Brixius trying to follow this around. <laughs> yeah. See Janko? Yeah, it's the yarn. <laughs> he did his, the yarn work. His eyes go from straight and they start sliding back <laughs> outward. <laughs> oh, I forgot they're straight again. This is awesome. Then my looking out the window and not seeing the ship earlier joke did not make a lot of sense, but that is okay. <laughs> it was fine. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm just not used to adjusting to seeing normal again. Anyways, there's a lot of people here. The gang's all back together, and a lot of people I haven't speared in a long time. I might... Does everybody just want to line up and we can get it out of the way? <laughs> Ogberg speaks up and says, We really don't have time for that, Brixius, I'm afraid. We're going to need to start forming ranks, handing out weapons, and, uh, oh, here come a few more of our allies right now. Who didn't bring their own weapons? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm just saying if anybody doesn't have weapons and uh, maybe some extra armor or whatever. But up the road comes a wagon and you see a tiny gnome on the front bench. And the wagon is being driven by a very big, burly individual. And the burly individual waves and says, Hi, guys. It's good to see you again. Great, it's fucking Hi, Lenny. sloth. You guys know... I'm not Lenny. My name is Harry. Henry? <laughs> Harry. Harvey? Remember? From Astrakane? I even brought Lord Carfwad. And Carfwad stands up and says, You know, I just can't believe that Zawadzki would do something such as this. And I am in absolute disbelief and shock. And I'm very angry and ready to fight some demons. Didn't we tell you, like, 50 episodes ago that he was shifty as fuck? You said no such thing. We definitely did. Someone take the axe on our back before I beat you to death with Figus. I mean, you can't beat us to death with Figus <laughs> if there's an axe in your back. <laughs> Figus walks over and says, All right, Sir Prothean, I will take the axe out of your back as long as you promise not to uh, crusade any one of us, okay? 
Okay. Promise? Dosh is going to be like, ooh, look at big man Feig is giving uh, Prothean orders now. <laughs> Which one of you is the squire? Well, I've been in charge of the Hammerfist for, for quite some time, and we fought demons together. And Dosh, don't forget that we also had that that fight against Hoke Venderberg, and I'm just feeling so, so strong and confident these days. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, Sir Prothean, please don't kill anybody. And he takes the axe out of your back. I immediately put Vixius's eyes back some in depth and angles. Okay, first of all, no. That doesn't happen. <laughs> Second off. <laughs> I don't get kick Figus right in the chops. <laughs> uh, give me a athletics roll. No confidence for you. And at the same time, Dosh wants to wedgie him. <laughs> Needs to be brought down a peg. Oh, I'm proficient. Yes. So I can't just deck but just in the face, make his eyes go diagonal again? No. That takes an act of demonic intervention. I rolled a 20. Figus dodges. Does he yes, dodge the wedgie? the training worked! Even on Figus! <laughs> Man, the gym must be so successful. He's been keeping in mind the three rules. I slap him like he owes me money. He dodges. Right in the face. <laughs> the slap lands because he was waiting for Brix- Brixius and Ambionitis to try getting him, but he wasn't expecting that from you, Prothean. Like, full strength, like, knocking him on the ground like he owes me millions oh. of dollars. He's a minor. No, he hit puberty, remember? <laughs> Every once in a while, his voice squeaks. <laughs> good call, good call. Brothy, you realize Figus has been working for me and not you for the past couple, for a little while now. Kick his ass. <laughs> I smack Do not hurt too. my man like that. <laughs> Delvia steps in and puts her hands out. Everybody. I slap her too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Figus, put the damn axe back in him so we can proceed. Figus puts the axe back in Prothean. Yes. Slides right on. He Ooh. listens to me, too. <laughs> like a coin Ooh. on a coin slot. <laughs> Figus uh, rubs his cheek and goes, Go ahead, Miss Tiefling. I'm sorry about my, uh, about Sir Prothean. And uh, Dalvia nods at Figus and says, In case none of you had noticed, and she points off into the distance, there is some smoke gathering on the horizon. I believe we have come together just in time for the quote-unquote fun to begin. Oh shit, it's Willie Nelson. <laughs> <laughs> I'm say, what's next, W? Jesus. Why is W not here? Um, off on the horizon, you can see a black cloud that is starting to billow in an ever-growing spiral as it grows larger and larger on the horizon. And those of you who visited the goblins in the Prussian Canal system, you recognize this from your flashback and from uh, the readings in the Chronicles of Parmar. This is what happened the last time when the Diademic Zorius was meddled with and all of the demons started to appear and roll over the countryside. Good. Looks like a little rain coming. What perfect timing. I believe, Chadley, that there's a lot more than rain coming. There might be blood. Ooh. Dosh pulls out his loot and just hits a sick metal riff when he says that. Breaking <laughs> <laughs> blood. I beat my drum. <laughs> I beat Lucy like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> I draw my warhammer. It's crusading time. And I think we're going to end it as a short episode right there. Leave you on a cliffhanger. Ooh. So uh, the whole gang's getting back together, and uh, we hope that you have enjoyed this brief, albeit uh, hopefully good, episode. And if you would like to stay in touch with us, hear more of what's going on in the Death Saving Bros world, you can check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash Bros. You can also keep in touch with us on social media at Death Saving Bros on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Reddit. I am available at HP Camper on Twitter and at HP Camper.14 on Instagram. You can find me at Benfro15. You can find me at Ima underscore B underscore Rad. You can follow the main Reddit page. You can find me on the PlayStation Network as FATT Smith. 
And you can find me at Figus' funeral because I'm about to murder him after this fight. Um, you can find me on Steam uh, with the username of Afro Steel. The O is a zero. And you can find me on Twitter at Two Times Tyler. All letters, one word. And to those of you who are listening in your cars, in your homes, or wherever you may be, keep saving those death throws and we'll see you on the next one. Some of the sounds and background music in this production are copyright material. The songs Aqua Trap, In Corridors of Yore, In the Court of Annis and Lavender, In the Warmth of the Fire, Leniton, Leniton Royal Procession, Midnight in the Ashen Grove, Renouncing the Oath, Shelter at Last, and Stibble's Codex of Companions are copyright Will Savino and the Music D20 Project. The songs Frozen Village Day Peace and Frozen Village Dusk Mystery Action are by the Boy King of Idaho at patreon.com slash boykingofidaho. These tracks are used with permission, all rights reserved. The Death Saving Bros theme song is an abridged version of the song Run by Kai Angle and sourced from the Free Music Archive. This track is used with permission under Creative Commons Attribution License 4.0. You can read the full license at creativecommons.org slash licenses slash buy slash 4.0 slash legal code.